Welcome back to YouTube. So I wanted to do an update to the two major signals uh, video that I last made because we're getting some uh, direction here and we're also seeing some fear overall in the um, in the stock market and you can kind of see the markets kind of alluding to that uh, coming up to the point where we are now. And if you haven't been keeping track of the stock market, well, you know that most of the companies that have had earnings this week, I'm talking about big companies like Amazon, uh, Microsoft, etc., have missed earnings. So Apple hit earnings yesterday, but Apple is actually on a tear right now and it's not pushing the market up, right? There's still massive fear overall uh, in the market. And I think we're going to see that uh, trickle over to, uh, to crypto. And crypto typically is more reactive. And sometimes you'll even get a reaction here prior to what you're seeing in the market. You'll see it sell off in crypto first. And then you'll see sometimes it, um, has a direct correlation here. You'll see like a week or so later, you'll see the SLF reflect in the uh, the stock market. But I want to start here with Bitcoin. And we're going to get into Dogecoin and talk about those two major signals here. So um, the setup that we're looking for was for Bitcoin to run up and retest some of these higher highs, um, some of these highs, excuse me. And what we're looking for is not necessarily the all time high, but we're looking to get in this range here somewhere along where this blue bar is, which is that 70 to 72 range, right? And we had two attempts to do such a thing and we got pushed down. And this one here, the last time was certainly more aggressive back to 68. So what that means is it's still not ready to go and make those retests and the strength in the movement is not there to go and do those retests. So we had the um, these golden crosses here, which is actually good. This kind of gives you a, a idea of the current trend here, especially when we had the 14 cross the 200, very bullish signal. Um, and obviously we had a big run, um, uh, you know, corresponding with that. And then we had the 14 across the 72. We continued up and did two retests here to go higher. And we got the rejections here. So now we're seeing this off here. We're seeing some push-ups, push-offs of the 200 day moving average. That's, that's this red line here. And we're seeing a curve of the 14. Now, if this continues here, especially with these larger candles here to the downside, We'll actually have a rejection to the strength level in Bitcoin to the point where we're having a death cross in the 14 to 72. So that's going to play out overall in the market. And you'll see how this corresponds to uh, Doge. When you see that Bitcoin is not having a strength here, it's getting consistently rejected. You'll see the signals here uh, kind of like revert. So what we're looking at here for, for Doge, you'll see that um, we had the 14, the 72 cross the 200, right? That's this orange line here that I'm highlighting is the 72. This red line is the 200, right? So that is a death cross, right? So this is obviously why we're seeing the consistent red days here. We have some decent push-ups, push-offs, I'm like calling it push-ups, but so some decent push-offs here in this range to go and retest back into the zone. But this last one here has failed. This one is starting, this candle is still alive. So it's starting to um, have that push up here to kind of get back and see if it's going to uh, close closer to this zone. But what we're looking at here is a series of red days, right? Two, four, six, about a week. Um, not significant sell-offs, but certainly closing uh, lower than the previous day, right? And obviously this is a very, uh, this is a, a bear signal here, similar to what, happen with um, Bitcoin here getting pushed off of the the uh, not being strong, <clears throat> excuse me, not being strong enough to to make those retests or to even hang on that consolidation range. It means it typically is going to go down and grab liquidity and then prepare for a, uh, a retest here. So for for Doge, what we're looking at here, we're obviously going to watch um, the 72 crossing the 14. Um, the 72 crossing the 14 is not as significant as obviously the 72 crossing the 200. That is, uh, this is obviously a big deal here. But what we've had here, because we've been in this range before and before and before we started this uptrend here, is to make sure that even if Bitcoin is not strong enough to go higher just yet, is to see if we're going to get similar price reaction around this uh, this range here where we close that between like 9 90 and 10 cents, right? As long as we're getting similar price action for that, then we're in position here to um, have that run with Bitcoin when it grabs the liquidity, right? So because I do believe Bitcoin is going to grab liquidity and then do another retest. And ultimately, I believe the tone of the market is depending on 
um, the, those retests and Bitcoin going higher. I don't believe that. I think that altcoins, what we saw earlier this year with Bit Dogecoin and all the other coins running alongside Bitcoin, I think it's unlikely we're going to see that again uh, at this point in the cycle. And I think that what the market ultimately is waiting on is for Bitcoin to retest those higher highs and push forward. And then we'll see that rush of liquidity um, come back in, in, into the markets here. And then you'll see the rest of the um, the coins rise here. So I don't think that we're going to have a lot of, unless we get like an independent catalyst, like a, like X payments or something like that. I don't see the individual breakout of where Bitcoin is struggling to um, keep its range and, and we're struggling with those retests. And then we see something where Doge just takes off. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think that as long as Bitcoin is going up and getting rejected, you'll see a very similar pattern here um, in Doge. Again, outside of a individual um, catalyst here for Dogecoin, right? So we're going to take a look here. As you guys know, I like to compare the overall market trends. So we're going to take a look here. This is something you guys can do as well. Let's head over to Coin Market Cap and Red Day uh, across the across the board. So this is looking something like this, the uh, similar to the stock market. There, there's blood in the water everywhere, um, and this the crypto market is no different. Um, we'll see. Let's see here. Yep. So again, this one, for those of you this may be the first video you watch. Um, I'm looking at the patterns here on the last seven days, making sure. There aren't any divergences between between uh, the coins that are like pegs of the dollar or anything, but um, yep. So we're seeing consistency here. So no divergences. Um, anything alarming here? We're currently around Doge is around eleven two nine. Bitcoin sixty three thousand three twenty eight. Um, I'd say typically a point where Bitcoin has been able to grab liquidity has been um, around that 60 to 58 range. And that would be kind of like that low correspondent with Dogecoin's um, like nine to 10 cents range, right? So as long as those liquidity pools uh, provide strength here for a, um, a rebound, there won't be a case for, uh, for lower here because this is just the case of um, the bulls and the bears and so right now the bears are sitting at um i think blues around like 14 cents for 13 14 cents for doge and sitting right at seventy thousand for uh for bitcoin and when they have these retests and they have this battle here to go higher the bears have won um consistently over the last few months so uh this is just an, a question of getting enough liquidity getting the strength here to um, to to ultimately push higher. And I think that's going to start with um, with Bitcoin here. And then we'll see that kind of trickle over into the market. So overall, um, if you are, if you can look at some smaller time frames, you can see more of the uh, the price action here. But you know that on uh, here on my channel, I'm typically looking at some of the longer time frames to get an idea of like strength levels. So that's why we're looking at um, the, the dailies here. But I believe that, if we see the what is it the 72 and the like the 14 again it's not a significant it's not as significant as crossing the 200 but that could signal that repeat of what we saw last time where bitcoin went to around like 58 and doge went to around like nine cents that could be just a uh indicator that you know we're going to go lower and grab some additional liquidity and as long as we bounce from that range we should run and retest again right so ultimately at that point it's just a waiting game we're going to have to kind of see but those are the, the major signals that we have there. And I want to point out that the, because all of these signals that are relatively close to each other, you can see the these death crosses turn into golden crosses. And they, you can see like these signals can change relatively quick. Or I'll say like over the course of like a week, they can be saying something different, right? Because right here we have um the 14 day and we have the 200 and the 72 all right here in the same area so some decent price action then we can have another signal signaling to the upside same thing with bitcoin right it's not um and that's one of the exciting things this is not the chart i was looking for but it'll it'll do um but it's one of the exciting things um about about this time in the price about this time in the market 
is because when you have these signals, things can change relatively quickly. Some people will be like, oh, okay, well, you know, you have the people are saying that, okay, crypto, if this run is over, it's dead, and then you have things change relatively quickly. And that's how you generate a lot of like that, um, that hype and stuff that ultimately ends up pushing the market even higher. Because you can have things like the 14 crossing the 72 here. And so, oh, okay, well, that's a, a death cross. And, you know, obviously the 200s here and then things can, even on a Bitcoin, because we know this price action is nothing for with us to get some of these larger candles and it changes the trajectory of the entire market. So if you are checking in on crypto, not as frequently, but uh, just, just keeping uh, an eye on it just to kind of on occasion to make sure that you're in the loop, just going to keep that in mind that we are consolidating a lot of these, uh, these signals here and things can change relatively quickly. So don't be um, that absent. Just kind of keep your ear to the ground so that you're at least in position here when these signals start turning toward each other that you can have some uh, expectations for price action. So that being said, that is the current price update. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Leave a comment. I'm going to get back to as many of them as I can because I want to have a discussion here about where we are in the market and ultimately where we're going. Um, I think that's going to be very important. So um, let me know your thoughts on this and um, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Uh, we're still pushing for 100K. So. Uh, Bitcoin has been gracious and giving us some time here to actually beat it there. So um, cur we currently have more subscribers than the current price of Bitcoin. So we're doing good. Um, so as long as we keep that, um, that, that energy will be fine. So certainly if you can have all of that, please do um, like and share again. And I'll see you guys in the next video.